Welcome, in front of me is a Google Pixel 7 Pro and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and the tricks you can do on this phone. So, uh, I will have a mix of simple ones and also ones that are like super hidden and uh, not accessible sometimes, so yeah. I just get straight to it. So I'm gonna begin obviously with the simple ones like a dark mode, which can be found under the, well, it's already enabled for me, but you can locate the actual settings under the display right here. And you have a dark theme. Now when you turn it off, obviously it's gonna switch to light, which is a little bit too bright for the camera. Oops. There we go. Um, so there we go, that's uh, one thing, but you can also click on it and this will give you an option for a schedule mode, which will turn on and off dark mode based on the uh, provided schedule of yours. Now, going back uh, to another option that is in here, it's going to be the uh, refresh rate, which is somewhere here. There we go, so we have smooth display, uh, automatically uh, raises the refresh rate from 60 up to 120 for some content, increases battery usage. Uh, so this, I believe, yeah, it's uh, enabled by default. So you can turn it off to get better battery life if you want to, uh, or you can just have it enabled for the uh, much improved smoothness. And also while we're here, you can also change the screen resolution. Now you paid $300 more for a phone that doesn't really offer $300 more of uh, hardware. And for some stupid reason, Google decided to also turn off the 1440p resolution by default, even though it's one of the upgrades over the $300 cheaper uh, version of the Pixel 7. So, you might as well turn it on. After all, you paid for it, or overpaid for it. So, there it is. This will basically increase the resolution to be just much sharper. Uh, now, this also will increase battery life, so if you prefer to prioritize only your battery life, probably 1080p resolution will be the better option, uh, and will give you better battery life while still not really changing the actual sharpness all that much, at least not visibly to me. So, it's completely up to preference. If you have some kind of like a placebo effect, you can keep it on. It's really completely up to you. Now, moving on to the next thing, I'm gonna mention the gesture navigation. I have it enabled, which you can do when you go through the setup of the phone at the very beginning when you first unboxed it. Under system and gestures, you find, where is it? Ah, there we go, system navigation. And you have the three button navigation or gesture navigation. Obviously, if you selected the three button navigation, you can change it to gestures right here. And if you have it the other way around, you can flip it back to three buttons if you want to. Again, it's completely up to preference. Maybe you didn't pay attention to it while going to the setup. And right now you want to change it. That's where it's located at. Now, while we're in here, I'm gonna touch upon a couple additional uh, things that I can find here. So. Uh, all the gestures that you can access here. Now, one of the interesting ones that we have right here is the uh, topping of the phone, which is quick tap to start action. So it just tells you to tap on the back of the phone. There is nothing there. It just detects, I guess, vibration from, the, uh, from your finger hitting the phone and you can assign some kind of action to it. So as an example, take a screenshot, which is set by default, but you have a plethora of other options right here. You can also set it to open up an app. But now kind of showcasing this, let's see. Is it enabled? Should be. Ah, there we go. I mean, just move my uh, fingers off of the button so you don't get confused that I'm doing this with shortcuts. Come on. There we go. So it does need to have like a fairly, a fairly like severe top to actually register. But um, if you encounter that for you, it just activates too easily. You can also uh, toggle this on, require stronger tops. And this will increase the force that it's required to tap on the phone even higher. So, well, higher to actually launch the whatever you have selected right here. So there we go. 
Anyway, let's move over to the next one, which is going to be the grid on your home screen. So let's go home, hold your finger on an empty spot and then select wallpaper and style. And here we're gonna scroll down to upgrid and you have a couple different options right here. If you have some kind of, I don't know, theme that you uh, are going for, then you can change it to, I, I don't know, maybe be like super big if you want to or small. But uh, I'm gonna touch upon only one of them, which is the five by five, just because this one has a hidden feature. So you can see right here, we have four apps, right? Visible, which is representative of how my home screen right now looks like. So boom, apply, but you can now see that there is five apps. And right now it's showing me settings. If I open up something else. So right now it changes to pictures. I close it all up. So in theory, it only shows you, uh, I guess the most used apps. So it will be switching, I guess quite frequently. Um, it probably should settle down later on the more you use it, but I am just guessing. Uh, but yeah, this is basically a dynamic one, which will be changing based on what you open up. So there we go. And it's only accessible in the five by five grid for some, some odd reason. Now, anyway, let's move over to the next uh, option, which is the identification of songs. So we will need to go into settings and I'll be completely honest, I have no idea where this is located in the list right here. So the easiest way for me to find it is just search for uh, songs, just type in songs and it shows up as a suggested one. As you can see, it, it shows me history of my searches. So there it is, you can just tap on it. And in here, all I need to do is enable it. And we do need to connect to Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna quickly do that. There we go. So uh, right now it's downloading the song database. Once it finishes up downloading it, uh, whenever phone hears some kind of music playing, it's gonna show it on the lock screen. So let's see if I can somehow showcase this. So I'm gonna try to make this not audible to the to you guys just because I really don't want to get copyright striked. Um, so bear with me. Hopefully I'll, I can manage it. Now let's see if it finished downloading the database. Still not. No, oh, no, there we go. So right now if I lock the device and play my music, Now uh, I am pre playing right now Royal Deluxe, I believe Wanted Men, right? Whatever, yep, I'm a Wanted Man. So hopefully the microphone isn't picking it up. I really wouldn't like to be copyright. So. It's not detecting it. It could be that it's too quiet. I'm trying to find where the microphone is just because it's playing really quietly. Come on. Nope. Now, I really like to not take the chance of copyright strikes just from some stupid things like this, so... I do have to, I guess, take my word for it. It does work. I have uh, done this video also on the uh, Pixel 6, which also had the same feature. And in there, I actually showcased this somehow. I Maybe I played the song and remember, but anyway. Uh, it will just show up with the name right here at the bottom, I believe. And you can just get a quick glance, whatever you are, when, it, when the phone detects music, which is a really handy feature, I would say. And hopefully, lots of other phones will have it as well. Now, next thing that I'll go over is the animation speed. Now, this phone has 120 hertz refresh rate. So with an animation speed, you can uh, shorten the well, duration between like switching to apps and other things and how fast it closes while still having a relatively fluid animations just because they're half short. The 
double the refresh rate would make up for it. So to do so, we would just navigate into settings. From here, we're gonna go into system and, uh, no, not system, my bad, about phone. And find build number, which is right at the bottom. Tap on it uh, seven times or more, and it will give you a pop-up. You are now a developer. So when you go back and go to system, you will now have developer options in here. And from here, we're just gonna scroll down and we're looking for animation stuff. So animation scale, speed, and uh, transition animation. So there we go. Window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animation duration scale. Now each one of them corresponds to different kind of animations. So for instance, window animation would be uh, representative of this window, how quick it opens. Just to kind of show you, show you how this affects it. So, I mean, technically I increased the animation duration by 10 times, so, so it'll be super slow now. But you can, for instance, turn it off in this case. So it would be literally instant. Uh, and for other ones, I, I would say probably the best option would be the half speed. This will basically shorten the animation uh, to half of the time that it used to take. And this will basically include things like right now, for instance, when you go into recent, the speed at which they move uh, from the side, how quick it pops up. So how quick it zooms in. These are now uh, twice as fast as they used to be. So really nice way to kind of save up a milliseconds of your life uh, that you have only a finite amount of by just enabling this. Now, I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, it's going to be the uh, getting back the power button, which probably should have done this before just because I was already in the settings page that this is located at. So I just back out to the main settings as you would open it up, scroll all the way down to system, gestures, and then scroll down and you'll have the uh, press and hold power button. And from here, we have hold for assistant. I just turn that off. And now I believe we should have our power button, right? Yep, we do. So I'm personally not a fan of the assistant. I don't really use it, but if you do, that's completely fine. You can keep this on. This is for all the people that just kind of despise this and just hate the change of power button into whatever the stupid thing is right now. Uh, so when disabling the assistant, it then brings back automatically your hold for power options, which is something that I prefer much more. Now, in here, we should also find, um, I believe in the settings, yep, uh, system. So we're in settings, system, and here you'll find rules. Now, this only appears when you have internet connection for some odd reason. So if you don't have any kind of internet connection, you won't see this. Speaking from experience, I get really confused by this. Now, rules will allow you to set up specific uh, changes to your device, as an example, based on, for instance, your location. So, let's say add a rule. Uh, so we could select turn on, do not disturb mode, uh, set phone to silent, set phone to vibrate, or whatever. And just select it like this. Apparently we need a Wi-Fi network uh, or location. So this is the based on where you are located or where to what network you are connected. That's how it defines what it needs to do uh, at the given moment. So as an example, if you, for instance, go home, you can select it to turn off do not disturb mode. While if you leave this network, you can have it that it turns on automatically do not disturb mode or in a location. So as an example, you could set that your workplace would automatically trigger your uh, do not disturb mode. So for instance, I could do it like this. So right now, this is the work uh, Wi-Fi. When I get ho when I get to work, it automatically would connect to work Wi-Fi. And then because of that, it would turn on do not disturb mode. So there we go. And moving on to the last thing which I wanted to show you. It's going to be associated with photos and uh, being able to just erase the content from photos. So on here, I was struggling with this. Probably could be because there was no Wi-Fi. Nope, never mind. It's still not visible right here. Uh, could be because I'm not logged into Google account, but that would be just absolutely effing stupid.
And the reason I do have a reason for this phone to be around here. So I can showcase what I'm actually trying to show you, which should be visible right here as well, because they are running literally the same software, but uh, I guess Google decides to show me a middle finger. So I'm gonna show it here. So we would just open up photos. There we go. And you can see we have a photo. And again, all you need to do is select edit right here. And in here you have tools, or at least you should have tools. I don't, just to bring back this up. You can see next to crop, I have adjust, which is the next option. Just completely removed tools from my, my toolbar. But under tools, you'll find the magic eraser. When selected, I'm gonna start doing something. There we go. When selected, uh, it, I guess processes the photo for a moment, but then you can just kind of draw around something and get it completely removed. Now I did select a quite a big portion of the photo, so it might, there we go, take a moment. But as you can see, once removed, it's just completely gone. So there we go. Uh, this should also work right here. I, like I said, I think this might be because I am not logged into Google. If that is the case, that's just dumb. Uh, but Pixel 7 instead of the 7 Pro, it works fine. So anyway, with that being said, this would conclude all the tweaks and the tricks that I wanted to show you. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.